Uh, okay, let's see if we can make this work. Um, I'm going to demonstrate a pretty interesting effect. This, well, at least I think it's interesting. This is uh, two coils. One of them, this one, is a Tesla bifiler wound flat coil. The other one, this one, is a standard flat pancake coil just wound in a spiral. You can see that they're not electrically connected. I've just got them separated by a distance and uh, held together by a nylon bolt in the center. Okay, So we've got the Tesla bifiler on one side and the standard flat pancake coil on the other side. Okay, So that's that will be the device under test. Okay, and here I've got a little rotary spark gap. Uh, there's the motor. I'll just show it to the camera here. There's the rotor. There's one electrode. There's the other electrode big washer for cooling, ball bearings on the shaft, little timing belt, and a motor. This is a 120 VAC motor, and here's the power cord for it. All right. And uh, here is a capacitor. This is a 500 picofarad uh, 30 kilovolt cap, and here is a little power supply. This power supply, there's a little neon sign transformer in there and a variac. The neon sign transformer is capable of uh, about 6 kilovolts at a little over a milliamp, say one and a half milliamps. It's a pretty namby pamby little transformer. So I'm going to Go ahead and plug the, that in there. I'm going to take the capacitor stack and hook it right across the output terminals of the 6 kV power supply. There we go. So that's just right across the output terminals. Just, just like that. Okay. <coughs> rotary spark gap up there and the uh, power to the rotary spark gap plugs into the power supply there. So the Variac will control both the voltage output and the speed of the rotary spark gap simultaneously. Try to get everything in the picture here. Okay. And then here's the device under test right here. And uh, what I'm going to do first is set it up so that the Tesla bifiler coil is on top and the flat pancake coil is on the bottom. They're not electrically connected. So now we'll do some electrical connections. Go one end of the power supply to the to one end of the pancake coil, which is on the bottom. The other end of the pancake coil to there's the other wire here. The other end of the pancake coil to the rotary spark gap. And the other end of the rotary spark gap back to the high voltage power supply. Okay, so now we're wired in, and let's see here. Okay, so we've got the bottom coil, or rather the flat uh, pancake coil, acting as the transmitter, if you will. 
and what I'm going to do is make a small spark gap and position it on electrically connected to the Tesla coil, uh, by filer coil and I'm going to use a little spacer, this washer, to space the electrodes of the spark gap just this distance apart. Okay, So we have a small tiny little spark gap right there and everything's wired up. So we're using basically the Tesla, or rather the uh, flat pancake coil as the transmitter and the Tesla by filer coil as the receiver separated by this much distance. Okay, so here we go. We'll crank her up now. Oh, I hope I can do this without blowing out the camera. That's a kilovolt. The uh, gap should start firing now. Okay. So I'm going to crank this right up. That's as high as it'll go. And as you can see, the small gap is not sparking. But uh, just to demonstrate to you, that there is voltage there. I'll get my screwdriver up in there, and there you go. Can you see that? Let me turn out some lights. Okay. So, so there's plenty of voltage there at that small gap, but it's not enough to make it jump that gap consistently. Okay, so we'll turn this thing down, off. I'm going to remove that spark gap and I'm going to turn this system over so that now we're going to be using the Tesla bifiler coil as the transmitter, if you will and the flat pancake coil is the receiver and I'm going to put the spark gap back in place this time I'm going to space it out with not one washer but two identical washers Now that gap is twice as big, that little gap now is twice as big as it was before, okay? And the only other difference that we've made is we're using the Tesla bifiler coil as the transmitter and the flat pancake coil as the receiver. Okay, here we go. Now as you can see, this system has no trouble at all sparking across that gap, which is fully twice as wide as it was before, and it wouldn't spark. Right? Okay. Now both these coils, these coils are identical. They have the same amount of wire identically they actually measure very close on an inductance meter. They're within a few tens of microhenries of each other in terms of inductance. But the Tesla bifiler wound coil is a much superior transmitter, apparently, than the other, the other coil. Okay, that's, uh, that is it. Thank you.